All right, guys, I got a Mercedes-Benz GL450 here. This is a 2008. Um, the front air struts, air springs, whatever you want to call them. These guys down here were leaking and bad. Um, pretty normal thing on this car. It's got about 120,000 miles. This is the first time they've been replaced. It's they're you know they're double the cost of a regular shock, but they come down and. <clears throat> The install is usually not too bad on these. Um, if you have a decent set of tools, um, a lift, <laughs> a lift is definitely like a, a plus. I know not everybody has a lift, but if you have access to a lift or you can get a lift, it definitely would make it easier to do the suspension. Um, let's go over a few of the tools you're gonna want. Um, we've got just your regular ratchets. Um, a half and a three eighths ratchet, at least a decent pry bar. I would, I would recommend. Um, I also got the big dog down there, which is my favorite. Um, things I feel like are kind of well, not kind of. They are kind of must. You need a ball joint separator. This one's an OTC, but a definite ball joint separator. Um, I would recommend an impact and a wobbly. Um, these bolts, some of these bolts in the suspension, they've been on there for, you know, eight to 10 years. They get like welded on there. I just had a little fun one here, uh, this guy. So it got stuck in there. This is the bottom suspension bolt for the, for the struck, strut or the air spring. And I literally had to beat the living shit out of it and heat it up with my torch here. It was uh, not fun. And then I had to cut off this end because it was mushroomed so not my best work it was it was a rough one it's one of the harder bolts but as long as you don't have that problem hopefully be good if you do don't get frustrated just get some heat and heat between the heat the impact um some pb blast which i would also say make sure you get some of this it's good stuff let's see I'll, i can i will link all these things um, but between the heat, the impact, and beating the living crap out of the damn thing, I got it out. But, yeah, it's pretty frustrating when that happens. It sucks. But it does happen, especially bolts that haven't been removed for so long. And it's tough. And the impact on the other side, it was able to bust it loose and kind of get the grime out of there. And I was able to get that one out easier. So... I mean, hopefully for you guys it goes good, but so again, yeah, things you'll need. I, I wouldn't want to do it without an impact. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'd want an impact. Um, I love my Milwaukee ratchet also. Those two are like definitely, I feel like must. Pry bar, got to have a ball joint separator. Um, you'll need a set of torques. Like, like I said, I can also, I'll link those. Good set of impact sockets. Hopefully you don't need a torch, but if you do, Home Depot or Amazon, you can get a torch, but I don't think you will. I think hopefully you'll be okay. Um, some PB blasts, just good to get all the, the bolts loosened up. If you can put it up overnight and kind of blast everything first, that'll help too. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much just like rough draft of all the tools and stuff that you need. Really, it's not too bad. Um, I'm kind of just finishing this one. This is the first time I've done it, so I'm kind of just finishing this side, but it's not bad first step on this one is gonna be it's a little it's a little bit tight but you got to get the airline off and then you've got three bolts on the strut tower here that you need to pop off and they're really not too bad especially with the Milwaukee so we'll go to my other camera here but yeah again this is something that's going to happen on these GLs um, you also need to know you also need to know which strut you have so this strut it's got no electronics or any plug on it. So this is like the basic strut. They have like an aromatic strut that has more electronics on it. So make sure when you're trying to order these parts, I'll link two different struts. Um, I'll link one that's non-aromatic and one that is, um, but just make sure you know, you know which one you've got. You're just gonna have to get the vehicle up in there and kind of look at your strut and make sure it's right. But yeah, not too bad. It's gonna take you a few hours. Um, be patient, uh, putting the struts, taking the struts in and out. Um, 
Today I'm gonna to have my guy kind of finish them up. It's just nice if you have somebody holding the strut up where you can get the bolts in and just a couple things. But, you know, Mercedes-Benz, I'm not exactly sure what this costs to do, but I would guess a lot. If you go to Mercedes-Benz, they're gonna they're gonna get you for 2,500 bucks to change a couple air springs. And I think with the right set of tools and, and a couple good air springs, I mean, you could be I don't know, six to eight hundred bucks, depending on depending on how good you are. But but yeah, so let's go over it. I already pulled the um, I already pulled the. You need to pull your uh, air compressor fuse. It's this fuse right here. So in between the black one and the other and this orange one, you got to pull the air compressor fuse. So when you um, take the fittings off, it's not just sitting there trying to pump up the line. But Anyways, all right, I'm gonna go to my other camera. All right, so the driver's side was pretty easy to get these bolts off, but we got one here, one here in the back corner there. This one, this bolt's getting in the way. So we're gonna remove the strut tower brace bolt so I can get out the third, um, the third strut bolt on this side. Just wanna show you guys that. The other side has more clearance and it's not a problem. So you've got all kinds of clearance around your bolts. So these didn't really get in the way. Oh, and it's because the bolts. So on this side, they're going this way. On that side, they're going the other way. So I almost wonder if somebody put the bolts in wrong, but I can't get to this bolt. So hurry and fix that. But I just want to give you guys a quick, quick look at that. This is the airline that we're going to take off on the other side. So it should be pretty easy. Okay. So I've got the three strut tower bolts off. I left um, I left one on just super loose just to kind of hold the strut in while I work on the bottom. I've got the airline out. Um, I basically just had to inch it out from here. It was, you just gotta go kind of slow. You'll get like just little quarter turns, but you can get a 10 millimeter wrench in there and get it out, it's just tight. So just take your time. It's gonna take you a few minutes to get the line off, but. That's pretty much the it for the top. We're gonna move to the bottom now, get the wheel off, um, and go to there. But not too bad, just take your time. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we got the wheel off. Now we've gotta get um, this knuckle or spindle or ball joint off. We're gonna, we're gonna use the ball joint separator. Um, so remove your bolt. Slide in your separator, pretty simple. With this tool, it's simple. Without this tool, you're gonna hate life. So get, get this tool. Other things we've got um, down here is we've got our, our sway bar um, end link that we need to get off. And then this bottom bolt, which gave me so much um, trouble on the other side, but this side, I've already got it loose. It's good to go, but man, that was a that was a bitch. So, bottom bolt, sway bar end link, and spindle. That's our next step. So let's get to that. All right. So I'm going to bust this off here. This is a 21 mil. Again, nice to have some good impact sockets. I'm gonna use my wobbly on this. So, I don't know, people call these different things, but wobbly makes it nice. So, there you go. Popped it right off, gotta love the Ingersoll. Let's get our ball joint separator in there and get that thing off. So 15 16 wrench on the ball joint separator. Um, I guess I could have got a ratchet too, but. And 
There you go. Got it. So having that tool is a lifesaver. So you guys are doing it. Make sure at least get this. It's the bomb. All right, I got a little closer quarters on the sway bar end link. Um, so I'm gonna use my Ingersoll Rand um, impact ratchet. Another cool tool. It's not as powerful as the, as the regular impact, but it does work pretty good on some of the tighter stuff and it is a nice tool to have. Not necessary, but you just want some cool tools. It's definitely another one that, I, that I'm glad I own. So let's get this off. Impact on the sway bar end link definitely helps because um, this the bolt can spin and the impact has enough power to just kind of still get the nut off even if it's spinning a little bit. So on the other side I had to use the Torx but this one was able to get it so it's nice. All right let's take a look. So we got the sway bar end link off uh, with my impact ratchet. We've got the spindle loose. The bottom bolt loose, which was the, the tough one um, on the other side. So now it's pretty much ready to go out. Only thing we gotta do is just uh, disconnect a few of these. Um, you'll have to cut this. They have a zip tie. You're gonna have to cut it and get a new zip tie on there. But um, yeah, we're pretty much ready. So from this point, You'll grab, you'll take up that bolt, you'll let everything loose, you'll be able to pull the, you'll be able to pull the shock out at this point, and then kind of rinse and repeat, but that's pretty much the process, so once you get to here, it's really, it's basically just reverse cycle. Alright guys, so I got the new shock back in, um, this is where having an extra set of hands is good, um, just have somebody kind of stuff it up in there and hold it while you get the top three bolts on. Once the top three are on, um, you wanna take it off and put it on, basically move it towards the rear of the car, go backwards, um, go back on it. And then here, I got my big, my big dog uh, pry bar. You can have one person kind of use the pry bar some leverage to push down on the lower control arm and the other person has to push up on the shock and get it up over the CV axle. So it's not bad, but at the end when you're reinstalling and kind of taking in and out of the shock, it's nice to have um, a little bit of help. But really, besides that stupid pain in the ass bolt, it's not bad. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you've got the right tools and a lift, you're in good shape. Anyways, thanks a lot guys. Please like and subscribe. Um, and if you, know, if you found this video helpful, I'm going to find you the best price on the tools and the parts. I'd really appreciate it if you use my links. All right. Thanks a lot.